the kingdom of God is in you. God searched for you. God called you. God picked you up. While you were still a sinner, he called you. There is no other seeking you can seek him. When you allowed Jesus in your life, you were registered in heaven. You became a citizen of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Wow, what a beautiful day again we have here to share the word of God. Glory be to Jesus. Blessed be God. The Bible says, Paul wrote, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And tonight I want to tell you, my marvelous believer, as you listen to me or any other time that you have tuned in, that is you, Paul was talking about. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. And that's what I want us to discuss tonight. So welcome to the show. This is your marvelous believers show on Wema TV. I am your pastor, Pastor Lucy Lepore, and I'm excited to share the word of God with you. Uh, tonight I'm talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom and the power in the kingdom is in you. That's what I want us to discuss tonight. And the reason we talk about these things, sometimes it's because we want to understand the basics. We want to understand the foundations and that helps our faith. That helps us to understand why we say the things that we say. That helps us to understand why we decree the things that we decree. Because as Christians, we decree so many things and some of them, maybe we do not know why. But it's important when we understand why we say the things that we say, what power is backing us to say those things? What is our backup system? What is our backup power? Because those things, when we declare them, they manifest. Some of the things we have said maybe have not manifest, not because they are not true, but because uh, we, we have declared things and then sometimes we do not even know where, where did this all begin. How sure are we? And then we begin to doubt. Corruption comes in our minds. Our five senses begin to corrupt the things we have said. And then we keep hoping and then they do not happen. So tonight I want us to talk about the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom and the power therein is in us. And this is something that I know when we understand, when we just lay the basic, it will help us as we continue uh, in our faith journey, it will help us as we continue declaring the things that we know we have been given. That's why I was saying, blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings, we have been blessed. But we need to understand what that means. And so to, uh, I want to talk about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And the power therein is here, is in us. We are not waiting for the kingdom to come. We are not hoping that the kingdom will come. There are things, you know, there is someone who taught and said there is hope that leads to hopelessness. There are things we hope and we hope and we hope until we are hopeless. We are not hoping. We have it. Glory be to Jesus. And uh, I, I, I want to start from Genesis. I love when I'm able to trace some things from Genesis because that's the beginning. Genesis simply means the beginnings. So when we talk about the beginning of whatever it is, be it our blessings, be it the fall of man, whatever it is, it has a beginning. And when we trace things from the beginning, sometimes they become quite interesting. And it's important, it is nice to, to find the scriptures and the episodes and the gospels interesting. Because then we read and we understand. Because they have become, they've gotten a meaning. There are puzzles that are falling in place. So I want to talk about where we started, the, the Garden of Eden in, the, in Genesis. The Bible tells us God created man and put him in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were in a kingdom of God. They were in a kingdom. They were in an environment and a kingdom of God. And if you read uh, your Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, you're going to see they were in a place of abundance. They were in a place that did not know lack. They were in a place that had no sickness. They did not know there is something called sickness. They did not know there is something like I need water and I cannot find it. They did not know there is something like I need money and it is not enough. Because actually when you go to chapter 3, you read about a river that was passing by the garden and it, it is the river that had gold. And the Bible actually says the gold of that river is good. Glory be to Jesus. 
the garden of Eden had plenty, had enough, had enough food supply, had no sickness, had no failure, it had no lack, it had no wishful thoughts that I wish I could manage to do this. I wish I could get some money to buy some milk so that I make tea. It did not have that level of wishful thinking because of lack. There was enough. That is where we started. That is where the genesis of man started. And that is the kingdom where man was created to reign and to live. That is the kingdom that God gave to us, to man. And then the fall of man happened and man, that is, the dom that is what man lost when he fell. We lost the kingdom. We, we were driven out of the kingdom. We left the kingdom. But glory be to Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus, God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus. That is why Jesus came. He came to reconcile us back to God. He came to reconcile us back to the kingdom. He came to bring us back to the kingdom. And so we are no longer uh, waiting for a kingdom. We have been reconciled back to the kingdom. Hallelujah. I want to read, um, I want to quote some two scriptures that I know in the gospels, sorry, in the gospels that I know maybe you could quote and they could maybe uh, contradict or make you question what I'm talking about. One of them is because I know Jesus at one time was teaching and said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Remember Jesus was teaching before he had died, before he had died and resurrected and seated on the right hand of the father. He was teaching when he was this other side of the cross. So he was teaching people to seek that they desire to have the kingdom and its righteousness. But look what happened after Jesus died, resurrected. The Bible says we were buried with him and we rose in him. We died with him, we rose in him. We are seated, Paul says, we are seated in the heavenly places with him. We have been given the kingdom. We are no longer seeking for that kingdom. The kingdom of God is in us. We live there. We are not seeking the kingdom anymore. We are not seeking righteousness. The Bible says when we accepted Jesus into our lives, we were clothed with righteousness. I've been talking about that the previous shows. We have been clothed with righteousness. We are no longer seeking righteousness. We are no longer pursuing righteousness. We have been given righteousness as a gift. So when Jesus was talking about seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he was talking about us now on this side of the cross, receiving it, accepting it. It's a free gift. Accepting the kingdom, receiving his righteousness. And what follows? All other things shall be added. Glory be to Jesus. That's why Paul is able to say we have been given all spiritual blessings. All. Because we are reconciled back to the kingdom. Back to where God started. Back to the atmosphere that he created for us. He made us. Before God created us, he made sure there is enough. There was enough for you and for me. That is what makes us marvelous. There was enough. God had prepared for us. So as we, as we talk about the kingdom, we are talking about something that we are not seeking now. We have it. That's where we have been placed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus. And so let me, let me just um, talk about, um, I have talked about uh, Jesus teaching about seek ye first the kingdom. Even in another place, I know in the Lord's prayer, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, he was still teaching the disciples how to pray. And that was before his death. And he was teaching them, pray like this. And he was saying, thy kingdom come. That was actually a prayer that was necessary that time. Because Jesus knew that he needed to go to the cross to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. That was a prayer that was perfect and relevant for that time. But you marvelous believer, the new creation believer, that's not our prayer today. We cannot be saying the kingdom of God to come. The kingdom came. Jesus also taught that. In Let me read this one. Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter, maybe I could read Luke chapter 17 
or maybe there are so many scriptures that talk about it. One time he was teaching the, the Pharisees and he was telling them the kingdom of God is actually among you. In Luke chapter 17, verse 21, maybe you could look it up. Let me not read all of them because of time. But he was telling them the kingdom of God is in your midst because he was there with them. What he meant was, I am the kingdom of God. For heaven's sake, can't you get it? And then uh, Luke chapter 11, maybe that's the one I'll read. Chapter 11 and verse 20. He says, glory be to Jesus. When they were, uh, when they were, they were judging Jesus because he was casting out demons, he said, and if I cast out demons by, by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. If I cast, because he knew that he was casting out these uh, demons by the finger of God. And he was telling them, if I am casting out demons by the finger of God, then surely the kingdom of God has come to you. He was actually prepared, teaching them or helping them to be able to understand that he represents the kingdom. But maybe it was difficult for them to understand. Let me read also Luke chapter, okay, Matthew 16. Matthew 16 verse 28. This is a beautiful one. He says, um, assuredly, assuredly I say to you, there are some standing here. He was still in a group of people that he was teaching. And he tells them, assuredly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom and power. Oh, blessed be Jesus. He was telling them there are some because he knew he was about to die and he knew that once he dies and resurrects and he is seated on the right hand of the father he has, the people who will accept him the kingdom of god will come into them and so he's telling them assuredly i say to you there are some of you who are standing there here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of god come and it's not just coming it is coming with power hallelujah you are listening to me. I want to tell you that the kingdom of God is in you. And it is not just, Jesus did not come to you empty-handed. He did not just come to you as Jesus empty-handed. He came with the kingdom. And it's not just the kingdom. It is the kingdom and the power therein. Glory be to Jesus. He came to you with the kingdom. And he came with the kingdom and the power that is contained in it. I'll read uh Two or three more scriptures where Paul is talking about us. Maybe the first one I want us to, to look when, uh, during our free time is Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Paul is saying we have been raised in Christ. We have been raised in him. We no longer be, and we have been raised to a different world, to a different kingdom. When you are raised in Christ, when you become born again, you have accepted the kingdom. You are translated into a different kingdom. Paul actually says he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We have been brought into another kingdom. That's why Jesus was saying they are, of this, they are in this world, but they are not of this world. It is possible to be in this world and to belong to another kingdom. It is possible to, to be... I want our minds to be transformed so that it is conscious that we are in this world, but we belong to the kingdom of God. We have the kingdom of God. We are not seeking it. We are not pursuing it. You can never catch up. You would never catch up. We are not seeking this kingdom. We are not seeking the righteousness. We have it. We have been given it. Paul also puts it in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. How we were buried in Christ and raised in him. And now we are seated in the heavenly places. That is Ephesians 2 verse 6. Please check it out when you have time. Ephesians 2, 6, we are seated in the heavenly places. You may be here. Of course, you are here because I know you are listening to me. You, may, you are here on earth, but I tell you, you are seated in the heavenly places. You have been given the kingdom and that's where you are seated. That's where you belong. Fall above principalities and powers. That's what Paul says. Fall above powers and principalities. Oh, shakatayanda. That's why Paul says we have been given every spiritual blessing. That's how practical it is. That is how true it is. Glory be to Jesus. And um, I will read this other scripture. Hebrews 
still talking about how we are in the kingdom. Hebrews chapter 11. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Let me read it for us. The Bible says, but you have, okay, from the beginning, verse 18 says, you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burns with fire, to the blackness and darkness and tempest, to the sound of trumpet and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that, the word should not be spoken to them anymore. This is when God had appeared to the children of Israel at Mount uh, Sinai. And when he talked to them, they trembled. It, the glory of God was too much. They trembled and they told Moses, please, next time let him talk to you. As we don't want. It was too much for them. So the writer of Hebrews says, now we have not come to that mountain that can be touched with hands. And that is burning with fire. It is not where we have come. When we have come to Jesus, when Jesus comes into our lives, we have not come into that physical mountain. So verse 22 says, But we have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. That must be you. My marvelous believer, as you listen to me, it must be you that has come to Mount Zion that is registered in heaven. When you allowed Jesus in your life, you were registered in heaven. You became a citizen of the kingdom. You are in the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come unto Mount Zion, the city of God. Your company now, it is the innumerable number of angels. The Bible says, to the judge, the, the registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. That's where the blood of Jesus has brought you and me. That's where he has seated us. That's what he has given us, the kingdom, diet itself. We have received the kingdom and all its power. The power in that kingdom is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. We are not pursuing it. We are not seeking it. We have received it. We must not live like people who are running after the wind. We must not live like people. Who, and then you start feeling like there is something I need to do. That's why the kingdom is not manifesting in my life. There is something I have not yet done. The kingdom of God was given to you. That's why Jesus came. The Bible says he came and reconciled us back to God. He took dominion. He handed over authority unto us. He took the keys from the devil. He handed over authority and dominion to us. He says all power and authority has been given unto me. And he has given it to us, the marvelous believers. And I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Uh, one of the things I want you to understand. Actually, let me. Let me quote it. Maybe I will not read it, but I will just quote it. Uh, Jesus was teaching and he told the people. Uh, it's beautiful if I just read it. it. Let it become the basis of our prayer tonight as we pray or whatever other time you're watching us, uh, wherever you're watching us from. Let's read it so that we pray with it. Luke chapter 12 and verse 32. Luke chapter 12 verse 32. The Bible says, do not fear little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. God has not told you to seek it. God has not told you to give him which sacrifice. He did not tell you to go and fast for 40 days to get the kingdom. Jesus fasted for 40 days to achieve the kingdom for us. I am not thinking fasting is wrong. I also do fast. But you don't fast so that you receive the king. You don't fast to seek the kingdom. We have a religious system that has taught us to fast to seek God. I am seeking God. I am seeking the face of God. God sought you. God searched for you. God called you. God picked you up. While you were still a sinner, he called you. There is no other seeking you can seek him. Before you knew that you needed him, he sought you. Glory be to Jesus. Before you even knew that you needed him, he sought for you. You cannot be seeking him. And, and Jesus tells the disciples, do not fear, little children. It is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the pleasure of the Father. That's why the Bible says, blessed be God 
who has reconciled us to himself in Christ Jesus. He is the one that has reconciled us to himself. It is his pleasure to give us a kingdom. And this kingdom, I have said, comes with power. This kingdom reinstates us to our uh, original status, where God put man in the original garden, where there was no lack. That is where we are. That is what we belongs to us. That is what God, Christ purchased for us. And he says, it is the pleasure of the Father to give you the kingdom. It is the Father's pleasure. Nothing pleases God more than to see you living here on earth, but conscious that you have the kingdom of God, conscious that you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing, conscious that the kingdom of God belongs to you, conscious that you have been brought unto Mount Zion, the city of Jesus, the new Jerusalem. You are surrounded by innumerable number of angels. Hallelujah. We are made marvelous. I don't know how else we would explain it, but we have been made so marvelous that we are seated right there with Jesus in the right hand of the Father. And to, uh, I want us today to pray. And I want us to declare that anything else that is not manifesting the kingdom, the environment of the kingdom, the environment of our original status, anything else is a lie. Let me tell you. It is a lie. The ambience that God gave to Adam. Jesus delivered us from the curse that came when man fell. The Bible says he died on the cross. He delivered us from the curse of the law. But not just that. Even the curse that came when man, that the curse of the ground that uh, God cast the ground. Because God told man the ground is cast for your sake. Even that curse has been lifted because of the death of Jesus. The ground is no longer cast for us. Our ground is not cast. Jesus died and became a curse. Our ground is a blessing. Our ground blesses us. Glory be to Jesus. Our ground is, it produces food for us. Those who are farming, when you farm, the ground must produce because it is now blessed. It's no longer cast. The ground does not hurt us. We don't die in accidents. You don't go and crash somewhere and the ground kills you. No, this ground now is blessed for you. It blesses you. It becomes your blessing. That's why you walk on it. That's why you move on it. It takes you from one point to the other. It is blessed. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to pray because I know uh, when we, when the reason we learn these things, the reason we keep telling each other these things, is because they must, our minds must be transformed to these truths. There are things that manifest in our lives. I am not, I, I, I wouldn't lie that uh, sometimes you, you have gone maybe to a doctor, and the doctor has declared you have uh, blood pressure is rocking 200 over 160. Those are facts. But I want us to. to Tell our minds to declare, to, to conform our minds, to help our minds to be transformed. That we live in this world. This world operates on the five senses. This world operates on what we see, what we feel, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch. Those are the five. But we have been brought into a kingdom, a spiritual kingdom that has truths. And the truths will always remain. Facts will change. The doctor can say you have blood pressure today. Those are facts. Facts change. I want you to declare those are facts. They have to change. The truth is I am in a kingdom that does not know sickness. Sickness and disease was dealt with 2,000 years ago. I am in a kingdom that does not know lack and poverty. The fact that maybe right now you may think about your bank account and it doesn't look very good. Those are just, those are facts. We are not denying the facts, but we are saying those facts, they change. But there is a truth that cannot change. God has brought, reconciled us back to a kingdom of plenty. A kingdom where there is gold and the gold of the land is good. A kingdom that has got trees for food and fruits. A kingdom that has animals for our food. That is where God has brought us. And so poverty and lack, those are facts that have to change because our minds are transformed into the truth. And the truth is the kingdom. It is the pleasure of the Father to give you the kingdom. It is the pleasure of the Father to reconcile you to a kingdom, to the peace that is found in the kingdom, to the joy that is found in the kingdom. There are things that are giving you sleepless nights. And those things are so real. I know they are real, some are written, some are on paper, some are on pictures. They are so real. 
They give you, they cause you to cry. They bring sorrow. Those are facts. There is a truth that you are in a kingdom of joy and it's possible to receive that joy. It's possible to receive that peace. It is possible to have fellowship with the Father. Some of us, maybe we feel so distanced from the Father because there are things that have been taught to us and they have caused us to be condemned and to feel like the Father is too far away. I am seeking him. I am not getting him. God the Father sought you and embraced you and he has reconciled you back to the kingdom, to himself. You have, your fellowship with the Father has been reconciled. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I would wish to stop there, but I want us to pray together as I stop. I want us to just declare that the kingdom of God and the power therein lives in us, manifests in us to the glory of God. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you because the Bible has reminded us that you reconciled us to yourself. You reconciled us to yourself through Jesus Christ. While we were still sinners, you sought us, you found us, and you reconciled us to the kingdom. And it is your pleasure to give us the kingdom. And so we declare today in the name of Jesus, the kingdom of God manifests in our lives. The plentifulness, the ambience, the peace and the joy, the fellowship with the Father manifests in our lives in the name of Jesus. We shall not walk in sickness. There is no sickness in the kingdom. There is no disease and sickness and death, premature death in the kingdom. We live in good health. We live healthy lives because we are in a kingdom that is full of health. We are in the kingdom that has plenty. Poverty and lack does not exist in this kingdom. And so every manifestation of lack we detach ourselves from you. We detach ourselves from that spirit in the name of Jesus. And we conform to the truth. The truth is we are in a kingdom that has plenty, including gold and good gold for that matter in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that our fellowship with the Father has been reconciled. None of us will feel condemned. None of us will feel distanced from the Father. None of us will feel like he is out of this family. We have been reconciled the kingdom and its power reigns in us lives in us we manifest it every day we manifest it as we sleep and as we wake up as we walk and as we walk as we talk and as we laugh we manifest the kingdom of god in us in the name of jesus hallelujah that is how marvelous we have become that is how marvelous we are that is who we are and thank you for watching thank you for listening i believe god has spoken to you i believe you are encouraged i believe you are blessed and um thank you for always tuning in and being in fellowship with us we enjoy your company we enjoy your fellowship we enjoy your comments we enjoy when we know that we have a family together this is Wema TV, the Marvelous Believers show, always coming to you on Mondays at 9.45 p.m. Hallelujah. You are blessed.